I first came to China in 1984, and I did live in the big cities in Beijing and Nanjing. Every time I was in the rural part of China, I felt in some way a closer connection. It's 5,000 year old culture. I'm attracted by China's long traditions, this, this continuous culture is what attracts me to China, both the new and the old. I still enjoy going to the big cities, but this is where I want to, I want to call home rural China. Here, the city pressure is um, removed and it allows you to focus on more personal things and more emotional things. And what has influenced me the most here in China is the connection that every Chinese person has with the past and with the future. In many ways, we're like middlemen. We're thinking about our ancestors and we're also thinking about how will our ch children have a better future. And in some way in China, that connection and that we're part of a continuum, this I feel has made me a better person. I feel more balanced when I am in China than I do back home. I think that the greatest achievement of poverty alleviation in China is not solely the physical. So we talk a little, always about kind of the physical changes um, and there are the financial changes. But what I see in China over these last 10 years is hope, is optimism. I, I see my local neighbors, the farmers, talking about where their children will go to for university. I see this opportunity now when you see your, your small village now connected by a high-speed train to the rest of China. When you see new highways, new roads being built into the smallest villages so that they can access all the things that the big city can access through online companies. This to me is such an incredible change. The optimism is so real now. Everybody feels they can have a better life. The Arhai, when I first arrived, the surrounding the area, probably going out to three, four meters, was usually covered in green. And it was kind of a bacteria outbreak. When the government, especially the national government, saw this, and they realized they had to take drastic measures to preserve the lake. I feel that China has tried to do, keep a balance between development and strict environmental rules that has always been difficult. I would say that in general, that the environmental changes have been very, very positive. China has made so many leaps from what was 1980s until now. And every year they're making better, more leaps. And this to, to me is, let's judge China on how the, the trend, right now what we see as, as the future. So in that regard, I'm very positive about the future. China's economic changes have, in my eyes, truly been miraculous. I believe there are a number of factors. I mean, I think the political stability is very important. Um, the government in China, in my eyes, is very efficient. They are able to see problems and they are able to address them, trying to bring the most benefit to the greatest number of people. Um, I feel that in some ways that's maybe a good model for government. Um, I have also participated in the Zhengxie. Sometimes I participate in the meetings. And I listen to in those meetings and 99% of the people who participate them are often critical. They're talking with the Zhoujia and they're saying, we, don't, you know, we need this, we need changes. And I feel that in some ways the West doesn't fully understand that form of democratic exchange. I believe that kind of political system offers the stability and efficiency. I've watched over these 38 years, I've watched the people, and um, I can't help but admire what I have seen. I try to tell myself, my story is, that in some ways, I've created myself up until the China, when I came to China. And I see that I had to hustle so much. I had so many different jobs to just try to get myself every step a little bit higher. 
And I feel that I've watched so many Chinese people do that same thing, but always with an eye on the future, always with this sense that this isn't being done just for me. It's also being done to give my children maybe a better future than I've had. This is something that I really admire. So in no way can you overlook the, um, just how hard and the Chinese work and how much they value education and learning. And this is something I, I really love in this country.